Brown's going to keep it. He bounces to the right. Sideline 20, 15, cuts back 10, 5, touchdown Michigan! Devin Gardner, and all is right with the world again. Michigan's back on top. Do not adjust your sets. This is still BTN Live. Jim Miller and Brandon Williams are out. Draft expert Russ Landy is in. And Russ, we're watching video of Devin Gardner, who I guess would be defined as one of the more intriguing draft eligible prospects in the Big Ten. We'll talk a lot about Gardner in just a little bit. But first, why don't you show folks who right now is on your top 10 board? This is a list of the 10 players in the Big Ten who you believe could have the most success in the NFL. And this is only the guys who are at this point draft eligible. Yeah, and I think everybody sort of expects Taylor Lewan to be the top guy. He's my number two guy. Um, I really like Bradley Roby, the cornerback out of Ohio State. I think when you look at Roby, you see one of the most dynamic corners in the country, explosive change of direction ability, great ball skills. He's raw in terms of being consistent, but the talent is there for him to be special. And I think the impressive thing is there are a lot of different schools on here. It's not one school dominating the whole list. So as you look down that list, you see names like Daquan Jones, Allen Robinson, and John Urschel, all guys from Penn State. Some terrific linebackers as well, and Max Bulla and Chris Borland. Borland, a guy that might have to fight some size issues, yes, but he no always question. seems to be around the ball. Let's go back to the top of that list, Russ, and you touched a little bit on the positives that Bradley Roby provides for Ohio State. Is Taylor Lewan doing something wrong? I mean, is there a reason why he's not your number one guy? Because really, he was told last year that had he come out, he had a possibility to be a top five pick. Well, it's not so much anything he's done wrong. I think more than anything, teams are really looking at him a little bit harder just because he did come back for his senior year. They want to see him be improved. And what I think they've seen this year is he's a little bit passive in pass protection, and he's not a dominant run blocker at this point. He's pretty much the same guy who was a year ago, a little bit better, but not greatly improved. We know Roby was suspended for the first game of the year. Is he going to have to deal with some character issues when he gets to interview time? Well, that's going to be the big thing. When he goes down to the combine, he's going to, if he does come out early, he's going to have to handle the pressure of answering questions and be, really being able to explain what happened and why it happened. They didn't have the greatest game in the world when they went out to Berkeley against Cal, but again, against that offense, you're going to be put in a lot of situations in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and you're going to get exhausted, and he'll <laughs> certainly have better games than that through the rest of his season. Let's focus now on Devin Gardner, the guy that we saw at the top and a year ago, a guy that nobody was talking about as an NFL prospect because we were all worried about what Denard Robinson exactly. would do and how he would translate into the NFL. What is Gardner's key? Why are folks in the NFL starting to become attracted to him? Well, I think because what they saw last year was they saw a great athlete. This year, they've seen the guy's really made big improvements in terms of his footwork. He's throwing the ball much more decisively. He's on target, showing good accuracy. So I think NFL teams say, wow, with all of the quarterbacks in the NFL now, Russell Wilson, that are running with the ball and making big plays with their arm, they see him and they see how much he's improved. They think the future is very bright. And he's also helped the draft status of their receiver, Jeremy Gallon, who really has shown the ability now to catch a lot of passes, where last year he sort of didn't get those opportunities because their passing offense was sort of rudimentary. So what about the decision that he'll have to make? And now as you look at some of the most successful quarterbacks, specifically in the NFL, Wilson went a full four years, two different schools, but a full yep. four years. Same deal with Kaepernick, who you and I watched impressed us at the Senior Bowl. Is that a position, especially now where coaches are saying, boy, that extra year of maturity, understanding a playbook, that really pays a lot of dividends. Well, it's vital. I think for a quarterback, anytime you can spend that extra year, it's huge. But I think the problem is you have a lot of people telling these kids, hey, if you're a running quarterback, go out early because you have a chance of getting hurt when you're running with the ball. Whereas if you're a pocket passer like an Andrew Luck, the odds of getting hurt are much lower. And I think it, it's, it's going to be a long time debate because so many more athletic quarterbacks are really getting the opportunity in the NFL now. And as Gardner's stock improves, along with it, so does Jeremy Gallons. Oh, there's no question. This is a kid that came into the year. A lot of scouts told me this is a sleeper because they saw the skill last year during practice, but he wasn't catching a lot of balls. This year, he has shown the explosiveness, the route running, and the big playability. NFL scouts have told me you could be talking about second or third round for a guy that entering the year most people thought was a late round or free agent consideration. Yeah, that Notre Dame game could have made Jeremy Gallon a lot of money. All right, let's go to the other side of the football and on defense, mention the names of Daquan, Daquan Jones, Max Bulla, and Chris Borland already. These are unique guys, play different positions, have much different physiques. What's your take on those guys, how they may go and what they may bring? Well, I think when you look at Jones first, you're talking about a guy that NFL teams like because of his athleticism and his versatility. Most teams feel he can play in their scheme, which means he can play in almost any scheme. So NFL teams like that. It adds value 
chance of going higher, potentially first round, definitely in the second round. I think when you look at Bulla, you see a big, strong linebacker. He's not a premier athlete, but he's a good athlete. He reminds me a little bit of a bigger Manti Teo, a guy who's going to be a very solid NFL player, very smart, very instinctive, but probably not a Pro Bowl type guy because he's not a rare athlete. On the other side is Chris Borland, who is a rare athlete, but he's a small guy. Where he measures 5'9 or 5'10, that's still up in the air. But a lot of NFL teams say, is he London Fletcher? That's really the comparison. Can he be that great of a player? Or if not, he's probably going to be suited to being a backup guy who makes his sort of role on special teams. I think the intriguing part about him is he's also a great pass rusher off the edge. So if you're a 3-4 team, you could use him inside. You could also roll him outside, let him rush the quarterback. Could really make a big impact in a variety of roles for a team that plays a 3-4 defense. Finally, Allen Robinson, one of the best wide receivers in the nation. Now, you told me something today which I think is interesting is that you're hearing about Robinson's future and that he may be a guy who just Despite what the public rumors are about a guy that may be likely to come out, he's leaning. Is that my understanding towards possibly coming back or probably coming back for at least one more for his left senior year? Well, I think right now, scouts, they, what they've been telling me is they're hearing that the staff is really trying their best to convince all their underclassmen, including him, that, hey, stay another year. We have a really talented young quarterback. If he's throwing you the ball for this year and next year, you have a chance to really put yourself in position to potentially be a top 10 or 15 pick. If you come out this year, may not go as high. And there's no doubt that with those limitations for scholarships and roster issues that Penn State has, Bill O'Brien and company have to do everything in their power to keep those guys who are impact players right now in State College. As always, Russ, my friend, great stuff. Thank you.